Hope you enjoyed the day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. Jazakumullahu khairan ahsanan tazafid darin. The Sufiya of the Naqshban, the Aslami order, they really do know how to take our hearts and minds directly to Madinat al Munawwara. SubhanAllah. I now call upon our speaker, our teacher, the noble Sayyid from the lineage of our master, Sayyidina Imam Hassan al Mujtaba. Stemming from a long lineage of Al Azhari scholars and someone who has, in a very short time, encompassed the hearts and minds of the Muslims of Britain through his character, his teachings, and his deep understanding of the Prophet character. I speak of Hazrat Sayyidina al Sheikh Ahmad Sa'ad al Azhari. One brief word before I invite the noble Sheikh. As soon as the scholars who are, who are the inheritors of the Prophet ﷺ start to speak, keep in mind that we are receiving prophetic instructions. And Alhamdulillah, many of the scholars who are going to speak today are not only inheritors of the knowledge of the prophets, but they carry the blood of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The first Sayyid and scholar to speak today Sayyidina al-Sheikh Ahmad Sa'ad al-Azhari Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mab'uthi rahmatan lil-Alameen Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Ladhi malakta qalbahu min jalalik وعينه من جمالك فأصبح فرحا مسرورا مؤيدا منصورا وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما والحمد لله على ذلك The main title of the tour of Sayyid al-Habib Ali is the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Master of a Change and the main topic of today's event is mercy to the world and I believe that one of the ways of manifesting mercy is to want people to change because the person who is really keen to create an atmosphere of mercy will always be keen to change the people around him and to see them in a better state all the time. That's why the father who is really tender and keen to change the, his children and to, to, to make it, he's really merciful to his children will always be keen to show some change and administer some change in their lives. And today I've actually gathered a few uh, Incidents in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a big ocean that people need to delve into in order to explore and the more they explore the more they come to the realization that they there are still more lessons to learn One of these incidents is the story of Sayyidina Abu Dharr al-Ghifari when Sayyidina Abu Dharr al-Ghifari decided uh, that he will leave the tribe of Ghifar and go somewhere else with his brother Unais and his mother. And they happened to uh, set, sit with, their, uh, with the uncle of Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. And after some time, some incidents have happened and that led Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari even to leave his uncle and move towards Mecca. When they camped outside Mecca, his brother Unais said to Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, I've got something to do in Mecca, so if you allow me to go there and you look after our mother. As Sayyidina Abu Dhar himself narrates in that, in that narration, he said, فَرَاثَ عَلَيَّ يَا بْنَ أَخِي He became, he, he delayed, he stayed over in Mecca for a longer period. And Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari was worried about his brother. But when his brother came, he asked him, what has kept you long there? He said, I've, say, I've, I've seen that they are, uh, they are talking about this man who claimed to be a prophet. And he actually prays the same way you pray. And in that narration, Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari is reported to have prayed to the Lord of the worlds even before meeting the Prophet wasallam, but without knowing whom, uh, to which direction he is praying. So Sayyidina Abu Dhar asked his brother, and his brother was an, a poet. He said, is he a poet? He said, no. I have actually compared what he says to the words of poets and he's definitely not a poet. So he said, is he a, a sorcerer then? He said, no, his words are not the words of a sorcerer. 
and I believe that he is truthful and they're liars. So Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari decided to go and explore himself, the Prophet And as the narration goes, Sayyidina Abu Dhar decided to go to Mecca and he went there, looked for a man to guide him to where the Prophet is. And as he himself puts it, said, I looked at a man of them who was quite small and I thought if I speak to him, he and he makes any noise or tries to attract people's attention to me, I'll be able to silence him because he's quite small. So Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari looked at the man and he said, Ayn as sabi Where is the man that, whom you're calling as sabi And they used to use the word as sabi to refer to anyone who has swerved from their religion or their tradition. So he said, where is the man whom you're calling as sabi And the man kind of got alerted by that. So he pointed at Sayyidina Abu Dhar and he said, Anta as sabi you are the man who swerved from our religion. And he started attracting people's attentions. And as Sayyidina Abu Dhar says, Fa they started hitting me with anything that they had until they, they made him very, uh, very exhausted. And then he went to Zamzam, washed himself, and as he continues, he said, Oh my nephew, I've remained for 30 nights. I've got no food, no drink, except for Zamzam. And he said, Until I gained weight. Supposedly in that situation, person will lose weight, but he gained weight. And then after 30 nights, the Prophet وسلم, as Abu Dhar says, until it was a moonlit night when the Prophet came, and then the Prophet وسلم, saw Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, and Abu Dhar came and approached him and started talking to him and talking to Sayyidina Abu, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. So to just cut the long story short, he said to the Prophet وسلم, uh, I, I came to to, um, I've come here with the purpose of looking for you. I was looking for you. So Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, which tribe you're from? He said, I'm from the tribe of Ghifar. And Ghifar at that time were known to be the professional thieves of Arabia. They were the people who no one can pass by their dwellings except that he has to be robbed. And that's why everyone was afraid of them. Imagine if someone is talking about the mafia today. And the mafia are camping somewhere and the mafia just came and accepted Islam or left their old ways. So Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari came from that tribe that has got this very bad history and very bad image. When he came to shake, shake hands with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that he's actually from the tribe of Ghifar, the Prophet was in a complete shock. But then later on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Ya Abu Dhar, I'm not going to stay in Mecca forever because I've seen the place where I'm going to immigrate to and that is a land that has got loads of palm date trees so I would advise you to go back to your people teach them Islam and get some reward by teaching them Islam the interesting point here which I'm trying to make is just before the Prophet Sallallahu migrated to Medina and that wasn't very long half of the tribe of Ghifar became Muslims and then the rest came as Muslims to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did not send a soldier to speak to these people. He did not even send a delegation to these people. He did not send anyone but one person that was Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. The point I'm trying to make here is when we want to create a change, what we need to do is first we need to look for this change. We need to have patience to make that change. We need to stand up for the truth even if we are by ourselves. Even if you are the only one that is speaking the truth, then be that one. If you are the only one who is without any helpers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. When Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu left Mecca and went back to his tribe, he didn't go making a lot of noise and saying, I've come with this message. He went to his brother first, Unais, and his brother accepted Islam right away. And his mother, and his mother accepted Islam. So in no time, he came to this journey seeking the truth by himself. And he went back to the tribe of Ghifar, three people having the truth in their hearts. And these three people created a change in the atmosphere around them. As our scholars and our teachers have taught us, that when you find that something has extinct, don't say, it is extinct. Say, I am walking the path they have walked. لا تقل ذهبت أربابه 
كُلُّ مَنْ سَارَ عَلَى الدَّرْبِ وَصَلْ Don't say that the people who have looked after this truth, the carers of the truth have gone by, but say, I am walking the path, and whoever walks this path will be delivered one day. Whether the path is long or short, walk the path as Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari did. Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari went back to his people with this message of change. And the rahmah of the Prophet was manifested in this one man who went and managed to change a whole tribe. All of them were professional thieves. All of them were people who were the most hateful people in the whole of Arabia. Jumping from this incident to another incident in the life of the Prophet right after the Battle of Badr, after the Prophet defeated the Meccans, people were hit in their hearts by the defeat. So Umayr ibn Wahab al-Jumahi met Safwan ibn Umayyah and they were talking about how can they revenge for what has happened to them in Badr. And Safwan ibn Umayyah said to him, you should go and revenge. But Umayr ibn Wahab al-Jumahi said, except that I have debts upon me and my children are young, if I only, if these things are looked after, if my debts are looked after and my children are looked after, I will go and revenge. So Safwan ibn Umayyah said to him, your children are my children and your debts are upon me. Here is a sword, you go and kill this man. Kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi And Umayyah ibn Wahab al-Jumahi went all the way to Medina with one intention, that is to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi But he knew that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi is surrounded by people and he can't hit him in front of people like that. So he parked his camel in front of the masjid and he said to the people, An'imu sabahan, like good morning. So Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab said, what are you doing here? He said, I just came to speak to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And Sayyidina Umar said, what is the point of the sword then? Why are you carrying a sword with you? And when he approached the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said to him, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, what is the sword doing with you? He said, What ugly swords these are. It has done nothing to us except cutting our ties of kinship and love. But the Prophet ﷺ looked at this man. The Prophet ﷺ knew what was in the heart of this man. The Prophet ﷺ knew the plan of this man. But he didn't say to his companions, Arrest him. He has come to kill me. Take him somewhere. The Prophet ﷺ was keen to guide this man and to change him rather than to exterminate him. Was keen to guide this man to Allah, to win him as an, another individual and another person who accepts the truth rather than losing him completely. So he said to him, no, that is not the truth, Umayr. But you sat next to the Kaaba, you and Safwan ibn Umayyah. And you said, if only someone can look after my children, and someone can pay my debts, I would go and kill this man and revenge for the defeat I had in the Battle of Badr. And my son who is a captive with them. And the man was shocked. Was shocked. And he said, no one was sitting with us except me and Safwan. I used to refuse you as a messenger and you couldn't have received this news except through Allah. Except through the heavens. O messenger of Allah, I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. What did the Prophet ﷺ do to the man? Did he say, okay, stay with us? He said to him, so what are you going to do now? He said, oh, messenger of Allah, I used to fight you in, the, in the, my, my old days. So if you allow me to go back to Mecca and speak to the people and spread the truth and remain amongst them to change the society that I'm returning to. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, go back, teach your people. Stay amongst them. And when he came back, Safan ibn Umayyah said to him, I'm not going to speak to you. I sent to you with one face, but you came back with another face. This is how the change happens in the hearts of people when you really want, and that's point two. Point one, stand up for the truth if you're by yourself. And point two, win the people rather than losing them. It's very easy to classify, but it is very difficult to bring people to your heart. We are an ummah that is very easily classifying others and saying these people are like that. I'm not going to, I have no hope in people. 
but it is very difficult to create hope in the hearts of people, to invest in individuals, to realize that these individuals are always prospective believers, if not prospective believers, prospective friends. Because your enemy today, there is no enmity that remains. There is no hatred that remains. And that's why it is, it is always important that when we, rea when we look at people that we realize that we can change them only when we have mercy and love and willingness to win them. And the third, and that's the final situation I'm going to speak about today. It was one of the habits of Jahiliya. In Jahiliya, Quraysh were the people who looked after the house of Allah. They looked after the Kaaba. And because of them, they wanted to give themselves a special ch a status. Some form of distinguished. They were distinguished in one way or the other. So they used to call themselves Al-Hums. Al-Hums were the people of Quraysh who would not stand with the people in Arafah, but they would stand in their own place. So on the day of Arafah, when everyone is standing on the Mount Arafah, the people of Quraysh would not be standing with people. They will have their own class. They will have their own place where they will be standing and no one would be with them. And as narrated by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim from the, on the authority of Jubair ibn Mut'i, that he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jahiliya standing with the people. So he said, what is this man doing here? He is from Al-Hums. He is not supposed to be here. And here is a lesson, a very important lesson. Don't make yourself distinguished from people. The Prophet ﷺ, in that time of Jahiliyyah, he could have stood with his people. But he said, one way of approaching people is not to make yourself distinguished from them. Not to make yourself higher than them. But always to realize that people, as Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib said, النَّاسُ مِنْ جَهَةِ التَّمْثِيلِ أَكْفَاءُ أَبُوهُمُ آدَمٌ وَالْأُمُّ حَوَّاءُ When it comes to the essence and the source, people are equal. Their father is Adam and their mother is Hawa, is Eve. فَإِنْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ وَفِي أَصْلِهِمْ نَسَبٌ يُفَاخِرُونَ بِهِ فَالطِّينُ وَالْمَاءُ And if there is something that they should be boasting with or proud of, then that is dust and clay. That's dust and water. مَا الْفَضْلُ إِلَّا لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ إِنَّهُمُ عَلَى الْهُدَى لِمَنِ اسْتَهَدَى أَدِلَّاءُ Real righteousness and excellence is for the people of knowledge, as Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib says. So it is very important that when we want to create a change and we want to manifest the mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu to the world, that we don't make ourselves distinguished from people, higher than people. And that, was, that is the same lesson that we learned from the Prophet Sallallahu when he Salawatullahi wa Sallamu was asked to solve the problem that, in, that was instigated between all the tribes regarding the placement of Al-Hajar al-Aswad, the black stone. When the people of Quraysh built the Kaaba, rebuilt the Kaaba, they decided who they were almost, there was almost an internal fight between the tribes. And it could have been that the Prophet ﷺ would say, well, let them fight amongst themselves. I have nothing to do with this. When you live in a society, you have to care for the society. You have to be involved in the, in the external affairs of the society. You have to be involved in the activities of the society. You have to believe that you're part of that. And that's exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did. He ﷺ did not say, well, let them fight. Let them solve it. But when they found that he's the first one to enter from the, the, the side of As-Safa, and they said, this is the trustworthy. We want him to be our arbitrator. He didn't say, he didn't say to them, well, that's your, that's your business. Go and do it. Well, I have no clue how can I solve this big problem. Although he was young, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. But it's not about age. It's about himma. It's about inspiration. It's about dedication. And he was, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi, young in age, but great in aims and ambitions. Therefore, he, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi, stood up for that great mission that even the leaders of the tribes of Quraysh could not stand up for. And what did he do? He solved it by gathering people, teaching them a lesson in unity. In a time when unity was literally a meaningless word, word in that society. As Imam al-Busir radiallahu anhu puts it very nicely, that it is very strange to find someone who is full of good character in a society that doesn't know anything about good character. It's very, it's very strange. 
في الجاهلية والتأديب في اليتم that he صلوات الله وسلام عليه got this character in a barren land and that's another lesson that when we try to work and change people and manifest the mercy to them what we should do is to be involved with them so that they would know who we are so that they know that we are not there only when we want something from them but we are there when they need us as Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib said when it was the heat of the fire or when it was the heat of the fight we used to hide ourselves behind the Prophet Sallallahu so he's the closest to the enemy and when there was something that would occur in Medina we would run to find what is happening and the Prophet is already there and he would come back and say La tura'u Calm down it's, it's, it's fine I think with these lessons Inshallah we will manage to manifest some of the inheritance and the responsibility that's placed on our shoulders from Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us the right inheritors of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and enable us to understand his good character and imitate it May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala use us to serve his sunnah May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala stand make us stand for his message Wa Sallallahu Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen MashaAllah Jazakumullahu Khairan Ahsanan Jaza Sayyidina Shaykh I sincerely hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables us to put together these pearls that the Shaykh has distributed amongst us, put them together as a necklace and wear them around our neck. Meaning, to implement in our lives the lessons that he has given us from the prophetic seerah, from the prophetic life. Now, inshallah, to stir the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, I call upon Hafiz Sayyid Jalal to please come forward and do some nasheeds in praise of Allah and His Messenger, Hafiz Sayyid Jalal. يا 
اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد